For the top of the stool, I found these two lengths of hardwood in my timber stack, and one of them had a maker's mark on it. I did try and Google it, but nothing really came up. After removing that tag, I ran them through the thicknesser, and because these boards were already very flat and straight, I was able to do both sides. No need to flatten one face on the jointer first. I did square up one edge on the jointer though, and then used that edge against the fence and the table saw to rip the boards to final width. I had just enough timber to cut each length in half to give me four boards to edge glue together to make the top of the stool. After letting the glue set up for a couple of hours, I removed most of the squeeze out with an old chisel. I then ran it through the drum sander before attaching my maker's mark to the underside. I'm not sure what this timber is, but it's a very dense, heavy hardwood with some very interesting grain, and it was going to be perfect for the base. First job was to rip the boards down to size, which meant swapping out the general purpose blade for a ripping blade. I set the table saw fence to the same distance as the thickness of the boards so I would end up with square stock to use for the legs and the stretches. I ended up with more pieces than I needed, so I spent a little bit of time picking out the best ones. These were also much longer than I needed, so I squared up the ends by removing the holes and any other defects they had. This was the shape I was going for with the legs angled at 10 degrees, but only in one direction. So the mortises for the lower stretches had to be cut at an angle. I set up the leg on the drill press using a 10 degree tapered block and removed most of the waste with a 15mm force in a bit. I then squared up the mortises by hand with the chisel making sure to follow the angle of the hole. For the tenons I first used a guide block to cut the shoulders by hand to avoid any tear out when cutting the actual tenons on the table saw. I set the height of the blade close to the final size I needed and then crept up to a perfect fit by making small adjustments to the height. I then finished the tenons by removing those small angled pieces by hand.
You've got to be happy with that. The mortises for the top stretches were just straight cut perpendicular to the face of the legs so I made up a simple jig to cut those as you can see in this drawing. I did a test cut to confirm the size was right. And then added these strips to help keep the jig in place on the leg. However, I didn't take into account that the router base was not symmetrical in that direction. All I can say is always do test cuts. After adjusting the jig, it worked perfectly. Again, I removed the bulk of the mortise using a 13mm drill. And then with the jig set in the right position, I used a quarter inch spiral bit in my router to finish the mortises. For the tenons I used the same process of cutting a test piece and dialing in the height of the blade until I had the perfect fit. I then cut the shoulders with a hand saw and a guide block before finishing them on the table saw. I have to say I was very happy with the results as I don't cut mortise and tenon joints very often. Finally time for the glue up. I glued the base up in sections doing the short straight stretches first and used spacer pieces to keep the leg assemblies square and parallel. I clamped and weighted them down to my bench to keep them flat and left them for the glue to dry. I decided to pin the tenons with 6mm oak dowels because the stool was going to be taking the weight of a person quite frequently and I didn't want them to possibly loosen over time. I did my best to line up the grain in the dowels with the grain of the legs. I trimmed the dowels with a flush cut saw, gave the legs a subtle round over. And then cut them to final height on the table saw with the blade set at 10 degrees. To glue the two leg assemblies together, I used these clamping blocks cut at 10 degrees so I could get even pressure with the clamps and attach them with double sided tape.
The base and the top will be joined together with dowels, so I first made another guide block using my doweling jig to drill a half inch hole all the way through an off cut of one of the legs. I then cut one end of the guide block at 10 degrees so I could use it to drill a hole in the end of each leg. To transfer the dowel positions to the underside of the top, I'm going to use centre pins, but I didn't have half inch ones. So I used a doweling jig to mark the centre of some dowels with the drill, and then used a 6mm brad point bit to drill a shallow hole in the end of those dowels to take a 6mm dowel centre. With the dowel centres in place, I could then position the base and transfer those marks to the underside of the top. With the use of a 10 degree wedge, I clamped the guide block of the dowling jig in place and drilled the holes in the top. So how many of you have realised my mistake? Because these legs are at a 10 degree angle, and I've inserted these dowels in line with the legs, they're also at a 10 degree angle. The holes in the underside of the top are drilled at a 10 degree angle as well. The problem I have is because these dowels are inserted at an angle, the distance from the tip of that dowel to the tip of that dowel is shorter than the distance between the holes, which means I can't install the base into the top. If I line up those two holes there, these ones are a long way off. So the solution is to plug these holes by gluing in the dowels and then cut them off flush. I'll do the same on the underside here, plug the holes and cut them off flush, and then I'll re-drill the holes perpendicular to the top, and that way it can drop straight down onto the base. I then used pretty much the same process as before to mark and re-drill the holes, just straight this time. I drilled the new hole slightly smaller so I didn't chew out those dowel plugs I glued in. I then gave the top some finishing touches. Pinned the remaining tenons on the long stretches. and was finally able to glue this thing together.
I used a beeswax finish on the stool which really brought the colour and grain of this timber to life. I left the finish overnight before buffing off any excess and the stool was done.